Good morning. Good morning and welcome all of you to Benbrook United Methodist Church this first Sunday of November as we have our special All Saints Sunday worship service. A few instructions as we gather together. Um, you may have already been aware, I know Lynn has done an excellent job in uh, reminding you, but if you have a relative, if you have a friend whose name is listed in the bulletin and whose name will be up on the slideshow, I will be calling out the name, and when I call out the name, you as an individual or your family or your family and friends, whoever is coming up, will come up to light the candle. Um, Lynn is making sure to wipe down between uh, people coming up to handle the candle lighter. There's probably a more official name for that acolyte lighter, but uh, you'll see it. It's big and bronze, and, and you'll light starting from the back toward the front so that we don't have any accidental sleeves that catch. Um, we don't want anything um, to be on fire than what is intentionally on fire. Um, as we continue on past that point, there may be other individuals for whom you would like to call out that may not have been listed. Okay, if that is the case, then we ask that you would stand where you are at, you call out the name, and then after that name has been called out, Lynn will just stay here and he will light the candle. Okay, um, we have quite a few this um, this year, and we want to acknowledge that, um, but also be sensitive of the time factor as well. As we continue on in our service, of course, there will be another point uh, where we will uh, partake of Holy Communion. This Sunday, because we have our projector up and our screen up, we will also have Holy Communion on the screen, and so you can follow along as you are able uh, to see. I know this isn't perfectly placed for everyone, but we'll have that set up as well. A few other announcements. There is a rebroadcast of this service and that is at 6 p.m. on the Facebook channel as well as on YouTube. So if you would like to watch it later, um, you are more than welcome to, or if there are others you know that would like to watch it, that way those who are not with us in person can watch online. Other announcements that we do have, I want to bring to your attention. Uh, we had an excellent trick-or-treat on Wednesday for our curbside trick-or-treat. Um, final count, I put Karen on the spot here. How many did we have in our final count? So we had 37 or 38 different children that came by. Um, and it was really touching to see all of the different kinds uh, of families, individuals that came by. Uh, some that came by uh, that didn't even know we were having it, and some that had heard, and some that said they were going to post on social media. And so, um, and there were several people that were very uh, excited uh, that they got to take part in that. And so thank you to all who volunteered, whether you were delivering candy or you were standing on the curb uh, and, and with a smile, even with a mask on, um, all the ways you participated. Thank you with that. Um, we continue to have our online stuff, devotions on Facebook, Monday through Thursday at, at noon, and um, we have our special offering by Joe on Fridays at 11, so please make note of that. Um, as we continue on in this time together, let us go to God first in a word of silence. Oh God, you who are ever-present, now as always, remind us, remind us this day, remind us even this week of all that goes on. Yes, we are mindful of the fact that there is an election Yes, we are mindful of the fact there is a pandemic. Help us to be mindful of those whose names we lift up in this space this day and the way in which as we lift up those names and as we light these candles, 
It is so much more. We hold close those memories. We hold close all of those moments of laughter. We even struggle through the tears. Give us the strength that we need through this time together. Be with those who are here and those who will watch later, those who are at home this morning, those who are struggling in hospital beds and those who are in rehab and recovery centers. We pray that you would be with all who are recovering from surgery, those who are facing surgery, those who are in the midst of illness, and those who find themselves without words to speak, where anxiety and where depression and where shock may have come in, where it's all too much. Lord, may you be enough. And Holy Spirit, may you intercede with sighs too deep for words. We come before you this day, seeking your grace, O oh God, seeking your goodness, seeking your mercy, seeking your everlasting peace in the midst of the storm that was and is and feels like it may even yet be to come. Remind us that you have never left us. Remind us that you are with us now. And remind us of the presence of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we lift the prayer that he taught his disciples and us to say, together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today, we remember, O oh God, the countless saints of history, the tender touch of loved ones. Today, we remember, O oh God, the healing words of comforters, the remarkable acts of fearless ones. Today, we remember, O oh God, the gentle strength of grandparents, the loyalty of friends. Today, we remember, O oh God, the sacrifice of parents, the kindness of strangers. Today, we remember in every time and place the saints of God who have shown us the Lord. Amen. Harold Baird. Patricia Clayton. Henry Griffin. Ryan Guyer. Vani Holm. Jane Johnson. Francis Jones. Theda Cornegay. Joan Lamb Harden. Rudy Iser. Lauren Runyon. Elsie Runyon. Arthur Sobin. Ruth Vestal. Christopher Warhurst. Choice Warhurst. Rebecca Wint.
Bill Zorger. Maxine Detmer. We acknowledge so many that we have lost this year especially. And I'm certain there are others that you name in your hearts this morning. And these candles are a reminder of the souls that lived in all of the ways in which they were alive and vibrant and light-giving to each and every one of us. And we are grateful and humbled by their presence and the way in which their memory remains dear and with us even this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear all of our prayers. Can we just acknowledge that this year has been so full of loss? It has involved the loss, certainly, of the way that we are used to doing things. It has involved the loss of jobs. It has involved the loss of life. It has involved the loss of so many things. In addition to the pandemic that continues to hang over us, there are these names that we have called out, some of whom indeed that were lifted up were called out because they succumbed to the coronavirus and others because of illness or age. But we have lost so many things. If you have lost something, it may be something small, you may not, it may not have to be something big, but if you have felt like at any point in this year that you have lost maybe even just a sense of control, 
Would you raise your hand? Practically everyone here has lost something. And when we start off, I just want to acknowledge that we have lost that. When I think about loss, I think about what I do in times of loss. A lot of times I like to retreat. Rather than kind of be present with people, I like to go and kind of do my own thing. I like to kind of go off. I like to frequent a coffee shop. And I remember several years back, I had gone to one when I lived up in Virginia. It was in Abingdon, Virginia. It was a coffee shop. And I remember it was kind of one of those kind of all-purpose coffee shops. You know, the ones that don't just serve coffee, but they also sell books, and they also had an internet cafe back when internet cafes were a thing. And they had cards that they sold that were kind of quirky and strange. And they also had this little stand, you know, that rotates around, and it, and it had magnets on it. And, and I don't know about you, but I'm a sucker for magnets, right? I, I love whenever I see like a whole bunch of bumper stickers, I want to look at all the bumper stickers to see what they say. I secretly envision that, you know, in another life that uh, I would have a car full of bumper stickers. And maybe it's just the preacher in me that has all these words and I just want to get them all out. And they had this stand and it, and it, had, uh, it had a whole bunch of magnets on it that you'd put up on your fridge or whatnot. And so I was reading through all the different magnets. And as I was reading through these magnets, there was one that caught my eye and one that, that, that sticks with me. And, and I don't know that it was necessarily meant to be theological or spiritual. It, it certainly didn't have any saint uh, name tack to it. But, but it said this. It said, in the, end, in the end, everything will be okay. If it's not okay, it's not the end. In the end, everything will be okay. If it's not okay, it's not the end. And we as the saints of God here in this room and here for whom we have lit candles for, acknowledge that as we who believe in Jesus Christ recognize that even in our hurt and even in our pain and even in our loss, if it's not okay, it's not the end. Jesus has had a time of it in John chapter 11. To kind of set the stage for the scripture, uh, he has been told that in John chapter 11, that Lazarus is ill, and by ill, severely ill, approaching death. And Jesus understands, as it were, his illness. He understands his impending death. And yet, he waits. He lingers for a couple more days in the place where he is before he tells his disciples that it's time to go, it is time to go see Lazarus. And they say, but Lord, he's just ill. He's sleeping. No, he is dead, Jesus says. And so he goes to where Lazarus is. And you hear these words. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now, Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up and quickly and go out. And they followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, 
Lord, if you had been here, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed. He was troubled in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, they scoffed and said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you? Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Sweet Holy Spirit, into this place, into this space, into even sometimes the emptiness that we may feel, May you bring your resurrection life anew, even now, especially now, in spite of everything else, in spite of everything else. May my words not be my own, but may they be yours. May my mind not be my own, but may it be yours. Most of all, sweet spirit, may my heart not be my own, but may it be wholly thine open and honest and broken before these people of God. Amen. When Jesus arrives, Mary runs out to meet him. She runs out to Jesus. She falls down at his feet. She knelt, the scripture says. And the statement that she says may sound as if it is one of mockery, and we certainly can almost hear it that way, that she is, has a statement that is one of scorn and condemnation. She says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. You can hear almost in those words her anger, maybe even her resentment, that there was something more that Jesus could have done to have prevented this tragedy. There was something more that could have been done. And sometimes we may have felt like that in the loss of those whom we have lifted up. If we did this differently, if we did this differently, if we, if we did this somehow differently, that somehow this would not have happened. And it's almost as if there is a cloud that is hanging over us at times, and it's hard to, to move out of the way. And yet, we can also hear Mary as believing. She goes and she kneels down at the feet of the master, right? She is worshiping him in that place. 
She says, she knows. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Now, they've seen Jesus perform signs. It's all through John's gospel. They saw in chapter 2 that he turned the water into wine. They saw in chapter 4 where he healed the centurion's slave. They saw in chapter 5 where he healed the paralyzed man in the pool of Bethesda. They saw in chapter 6 where he fed the 5,000 and he walked on water. They saw in chapter 9 where he healed the man born blind. He had done so many things, but he had not brought someone back from the dead. And so they knew that he could do many things. And yet Mary, in this moment, chooses to extend even what she doesn't know and yet believes beyond what she understands. To say, yes, I believe that you could have healed his illness. And Jesus says, but greater than that, Greater than this, watch. And Jesus sees her crying. He sees her weeping and asks where he is. And so they point out the tomb. And in that moment, he loses it. He has probably kept his composure this whole time. He has known that his friend Lazarus has died. He has walked with that burden the whole way back there to Bethany. The disciples don't know. The disciples don't understand, but he understands. He gets it. He has had that burden, and he has gotten to Mary. And when Mary kneels down and he goes, and he is right there at that presence, at that place, at that tomb, when it all becomes so real, and there is that moment finally when he breaks down and he loses it too. We need to know that. We need to understand that. As we light these candles, that there is a moment that Jesus loses it too. So often we think of Jesus as composed, we think of Jesus as miraculous, we think of Jesus in all of these ways, but there has to be a moment where we understand Jesus is fully relational to us as not just fully divine, but fully human. And in that moment, Jesus just loses it. He bawls. And maybe that has happened for you. Or maybe that is yet to come. But in the moments that you have lost it, Jesus is there beside you saying, I have lost a dear beloved friend as well. And I grieve alongside you as well. And there are people who mock him, right? In the midst of all that, they've seen the signs that he can do. Surely, he should have kept him from dying, they say. But he comes to the tomb The stone is rolled away. And Martha protests. She says, this is what I know. Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. The Jews believe that after three days, the body, the soul left the body. There was no way that it could be brought back together. There was no way that things could be reconciled together. This was past the point of no return. And this stench confirms it. And Jesus says, did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God. So they take away the stone, and Jesus says, Father, I thank you for all of this and the way in which you would reveal your glory through me. And he says with a loud voice, 
Lazarus come out. And the dead man came out. His hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, his face wrapped up in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Jesus loved him in that moment more than they could have imagined. And Jesus loves us in our moments of grief. Not just as much as we can imagine, but even more than we can imagine. And no, Jesus may not have arrived in time to save our loved ones, we may think. And yet, in the end, everything will be okay. If it's not okay, it's not the end. We who follow after Jesus Christ recognize that in his life, in his teachings, in all of his miracles and signs, in his death, but yes, even in his resurrection, that we too one day will cling to that resurrection from the dead. That we too one day will live again. That we too will one day learn to see those whom we are grieving in this moment, whom have gone from us in a physical space, yet they will be a part. How, we do not fully know or understand, and yet we know it is through Jesus Christ. You see, his love is transformational. His love does not know bounds. His love does not have the confines of death it does not have the restriction of three days or four days or however many days or however many years it has been. Because there are saints that we have lost not just this year, but 30, 40 years ago, longer than that. And we have a God who is above and beyond all of that. And sometimes it may not feel okay. Sometimes the political world, sometimes fought wildfires and hurricanes, sometimes everything that else is going on in our lives makes it seem as if there is absolutely nothing, preacher, that could possibly be okay. And yet I stand here convinced. I stand here assured. I cling to that hope. I cling to that promise. Now as much as ever, that as I see these candles lit, that we are confirming before each other and before all the world that in the end, everything will be okay. And if it is not okay, it's not the end. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. You're invited to follow along in the words that are in bold, that are up on the screen, where it says all. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so... In remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Receive now this benediction. May you go forth from this place, knowing that you are not alone and that it is not the end. The company of saints past and the company of saints present gathered here in this place Go with us now and always. In the end, everything will be okay, for Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen.